Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. Last night I did a video on the 2021 Ford F-150. It was a live stream with you interactive, the telling me what to buy and what to click the buttons. We talked about some options and things. As a result of that video, I got a comment on the channel that asked me to do the F-350 F as well. Um, there's a lot of new options in these trucks, and I think a lot of people are trying to figure out what all this new stuff is. You know, 10 years ago, you just went and bought the big truck you needed, the big gas engine, or the diesel. Your choices were leather or cloth. That's what it was. Today, the options and features are crazy to figure out. And, you know, for me, I often take it for granted because I do all these press conferences and such, and I get inundated with this stuff all the time. And so that was a really good comment that, you know, and I'll take the criticism, a lot of times I miss certain features that you guys may not know about, I take for granted because I just know them. So this video is for you. Thank you for commenting. If you have other comments, things you want to see, make sure you comment below on this or email me at timitpickuptrucktalk.com. I'll do those videos as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the camera over here. I'm going to record my screen. We're going to go ahead and build an F-350, kind of talk about some, some of the options. And I have some of the things kind of pulled up as well I want to explain on the couple different features that probably are a little bit unclear to people shopping for the new F F-350. So we'll do that. Also, make sure you hit subscribe, stick around, because this is kind of stuff I love on this channel, and I'm going to go ahead and put a link above as well to another video I did where I asked the Chevy engineers some basic questions like, why they use turbos? Why are we using direct injection? Why do we keep having more multi-speed transmissions? Really good stuff in that video. Again, check that out. So I'm going to stop blabbering. Let's get to the content. I'll go ahead and move to the camera right now. Let's go ahead and dive into this. I'm going to be at Ford.com, so I'm looking at Super Duties. I have a 250, a 350, and a 450. I have a regular cab, super cab, and crew cab. Those are my choices. Super cab is their extended cab. Uh, six and three quarter, quarter foot bed, eight foot bed, singles, duals, and then I can select wheelbase as well, which is pretty interesting. When I do the F350 and the extended cab, or maybe I'll do a crew cab. I can't do the crew cab. I guess I'm just doing the extended cab for whatever reason. Or maybe it's a wheelbase. Wheelbase could be an issue. There we go. So I had to make a longer wheelbase because I have a crew cab with the bed. And so um, 160 inches, 164, 176. So 160 is going to be our number. Uh, crew cab is pretty, mostly pretty popular with everybody just because you can fit good guys in there, plus have room in the bed to carry stuff. And so if I do eight foot bed, again, it's just kind of funky how they do it. You have to change the wheelbase sizing until you can get the longer size. So 176 inches is a really long truck. That's a crew cab with eight foot bed. That's a big guy. Let's go back to something, I guess, a little more reasonable in my head. Um, six and three quarter foot bed, and we have the extended cab, or crew cab with six and a foot bed. That's pretty pretty typical. But let's dive into these options. We really want to get to these options. Um, we'll start with the XL. This is the advanced track. It has the 6.2 liter single overhead cam, two valve, flex fuel V8 engine. Flex fuel is that uh, fuel allows you to use ethanol, and you got to make sure your truck has that Sticker on it, by the way, too. If you use ethanol in a non-flex fuel truck, you can damage the fuel lines and gunk up the engine. Uh, Ford Pass Connect is their app they use to work with the truck. You can check things like maintenance records. You can check things like start-stop. You can turn it on, turn it off with it with the Ford Pass. It's pretty cool. Um, actually, it connects to my Apple Watch as well. And I had a Raptor, and I turned on the Raptor from inside my house with my watch. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Uh, it's got the sync system, which is their infotainment screen system. Uh, advanced track with rule stability control. I actually looked this up. This is a feature from 2008. I'm going to play a video. It's about a one minute video, and it really explains what that is. Ford has the industry leading stability control system, we call it advanced track with roll stability control. The gyroscopic sensors that we use are the same sensors that are used in a lot of aircraft navigation. When the vehicle enters a rotational event, those tuning forks move in a specific way that allows us to measure the rotational rate of the vehicle. So Ford's gone a step above and beyond by adding this extra sensor element. We used the same yaw control, but we added the roll sensing and have generated the pinnacle of roll stability control. The system immediately comes in and applies the brakes. And so it can act before the driver may even know that they need it to act. You walk away with the wow. I can't believe the vehicle could do that. So then let's go back to look at more features here. As I was kind of looking down, I was going to pull this up. Standard features, we have bumpers, door handles are gray or black. Mirrors are manual telescoping trailer mirror with manual glass, so they're not powered. That's the standard features. 
Uh, interior, we have air conditioning, with manual temperature control, grab handles, headliner. And there's really just some really basic stuff here as well. Uh, rear view camera, now that's gonna be in the center screen. That's gonna be tailgate mounted. So it's usually right where the tailgate um, releases. The latch will be a, a little small camera. Uh, steering wheel, tilt and telescoping steering wheel. It's gonna be standard. Four pass connect with 4G Wi-Fi hotspot. So this truck has Wi-Fi in it. You do have to pay for that separately. Uh, either AT&T or does it whatever, but you can activate the Wi-Fi hotspot inside the truck. And it tends to use a better signal than your, your cell phone does because it uses the antenna above and a little bit stronger. So if you have work in an area where you have poor Wi-Fi, something you may check out with that. Uh, carpet delete, delete, upfitter interface module. This is a, uh, a separate module you can plug in and you can set different things for, like say you want the spreader to only work at certain times or you, only, you don't want something to deploy while there's traffic nearby. You can set that stuff up in the interface module. Automatic high beam headlights, that's great to have standard. So when you turn on your, your brights, it'll turn on and turn off as it senses traffic coming at you. Sometimes it doesn't work as great because it'll see trees and stop signs at night and it, it gets confused, but it's a nice feature to have, especially when you live in a country like I do. Uh, carpet delete, that kind of stuff, so that's pretty simple. Uh, axle, this, I thought this was pretty interesting and, and this kind of goes back to 1960s, but the twin I-beam front axle with coil spring suspension, that's the two-wheel drive version and I have a photo of it. Let me pull this photo up. And it's gonna be right here. You can see these two pieces of steel that kind of come together. And allows for a little bit more articulation, a little bit more smoother ride when you have that those working together versus the single axle, which is, um, I did an F-250 video with a single axle and that thing rode pretty rough. So something to keep in mind um, with the twin I-beam. And you can see these images from 1965 twin I-beam pickups built to last longer. Then it says the front wheels operate independently, each on an axle, front wheels are forged steel I-beams like big truck shoes. Forged radius steel, secure, axle pivot, husky, long life, non-lube bushings. So there's your choices there. The, I, I have seen, um, there's a Carlisle, which is a different suspension company for the Ford Super Duty trucks. I've seen consumers use that, or they actually drop the air pressure on their tires to get a little bit smoother ride with that four-wheel drive, 250 and 350s. Uh, we talked about advanced roll stability control, trailer sway control. Um, what that does, it, it'll sense the trailer's out of control and it'll slow the truck down, apply brakes independently to wheels so that we bring it back into control. Um, there's a stationary elevated idle control. So if you're just idling, it'll control that a little bit better. The steering, there's a steering wheel dampener, steering dampener, so it reduces some vibrations coming in the steering wheel. And I'm um, looking for other things that would maybe stand out to you guys as far as things are different. Uh, lots of airbags. One of the biggest things you'll see with new trucks is they are considerably safer, a lot more safety equipment than you've ever had in the past. And it's one of the reasons why truck prices have kind of gone up is because you're paying more for that safety equipment. And some of that safety equipment is standard um, equipment that automakers have to put in a truck. So like a, um, a rear view backup cameras are now standard. They have to be standard on new, all new trucks moving forward. And that price just comes down to you guys. Just That's what's gonna happen. Uh, there's the new 10 speed automatic transmission on this Super Duty I'm looking at right here. And it has drive modes are normal, tow haul, eco, deep sand and snow. What those drive modes do is they change the way the transmission reacts and the engine re reacts to different driving conditions. And it changes the way sometimes the throttle and the brake responses are. So like if you're, um, if you're in tow haul mode, it'll change the shifting points of transmission to hold that gear better. And may, it'll probably make the gas pedal less responsive and the brakes a little bit less responsive. That way you're not like, you know, taking off so harsh or trying to stop so fast with a trailer behind you. So that's how those things work, those drive modes. But let's go, let's go a little bit deeper into this stuff. And let's, I'm um, gonna close this. I wanna go, oh, I do have a King Ranch. King Ranch usually has all these options. Let's go ahead and configure what these options are. Let me, let me go back one step too, because it had some new features there as well. Make sure I go over those. Oh yeah, adaptive cruise control with collision warning and brake support. If you haven't heard of this before, it is a sonar signal sent out. It's usually about the, by the grill, and it sends a signal out, and it picks up vehicles in front of you, and it sets you know a distance between you and that vehicle and holds that distance. It used, works when you're using cruise control. So if you set your cruise at 70 with adaptive cruise on, it'll maintain that speed until it comes up to a vehicle that's a little bit slower, and then it'll match a slower vehicle speed until you change lanes. As you change lanes, then it'll detect no vehicle in front of you, and it'll pick speed speed back up. 
this is really interesting. It happened, um, I don't know what time you watch this video, but the new Chevy Tahoe and, you, and Suburban, I believe it is, they have a new electrical digital platform. And what that allowed them to do is add more processors because one of the complaints with adaptive cruise control is when you change lanes, it's slow picking back up to speed. And they said with that new digital frame, framework they have in that, I forget the name of that, um, that allows them to, to accelerate faster because they have more processors working. And so they've increased the computing power of the truck to be able to handle that. Uh, quad beam LED headlamps, uh, power deployable running boards. Those are the running boards come out and they deploy. Uh, leather front seats. So let's, let's look at more features here. Yep, there's adaptive cruise control. You can see a picture on the screen. There's the headlamps, uh, the power deployable steps. As I'm kind of just kind of scrolling through here a little bit faster, wait. Uh, high airflow grill, and so this is pretty interesting. They've allowed more air to come through into the um, air box, into the engine to cool down the diesel as well. And so they've changed some stuff. I know uh, Chevy has a new boat flow tie, whatever it is, and airflow goes through the Chevy emblem now instead of being going around it. Uh, pickup lights, uh, mirrors, or power scope. So they're heated, power uh, telescoping pulled full away. And tailgates, you can do remote tailgate release now. Usually it's on the, on the keypad. I think not keypad, but on your uh, key fob. Um, box link, interior features. Yeah, not seeing a whole lot else that is uh, that kind of stands out to me. The wireless charging pad, if you have a, a phone that is allows for a Qi wireless charging, I think I say Qi, uh, you just drop it in there and your phone will just automatically charge, which is a really cool feature. Um, that's in the higher trim levels, you find that. Pre-collision assist with an automatic emergency braking. This has been a, a new safety feature coming out quite a bit is that it uses a, that same radar and sonar to detect a vehicle in front of you, and it'll pre-charge the brakes and allow those brakes to be even harsher to stop. And so when it, when it sees that, it'll you know, alert you. Um, some vehicles have a big red bar that lights up, whatever, and then it'll pre-charge those brakes, and it actually will hit the braking as well. So that way the, the truck will stop itself as you know, waking you up a little bit if you're, if you're dozing, whatever. It'll start stopping itself, and that way you avoid collisions. Adaptive steering, so this um, improves the, the steering reverse sensing system, remote start system, uh, lane keeping alert. So lane keeping alert, what that allows you to do is there's up by the mirror, there's two cameras that shoot out and they pick up the lines in the road and it'll keep you in that lane. If you get out of the lane, it'll either beep you, the seat will vibrate depending on the truck and it tries to keep you in that lane. So it's, it's, it's almost like it's semi-autonomous driving. It's not fully autonomous driving, but semi-autonomous where you set adaptive cruise control, have lane keeping, and it'll maintain your speed and it'll keep you in the lane that, so you don't cause accidents. Uh, Ford Pass, 4G, we talked about that. Automatic high beams, which is cool. I'm glad that's a standard feature. Uh, power equipment group. Uh, ultimate tow camera system with tro pro trailer backup assist package. I believe I pulled that up. Um, basically what that allows you to do, and oh yeah, um, it allows you to set up your camera system to work with your trailer. And so, you, and you can do a, a backup assist package. So when you're backing up a trailer, I've done this where you back up the trailer and actually you turn a dial and it backs up for you. You turn the dial, backs up either way. And then there's another button. And I think this is the button as well. I'll have to pull this up when I do the in post in video is that when you, uh, you can almost like press a button, all you do is steer and it backs up for you really handy with a uh, fifth wheels we're camping to a camping spot really handy feature how about that talk about that talked about yep oh and this is interesting uh four-wheel drive system with manual locking hubs i remember this happened a couple years ago i had an f-350 i'll try to pull up this image but if you look right in the front wheel you can see it's got a manual locking hub in the front and i, I remember i asked ford why they still did that I'm, I'm not sure i don't remember the answer was but yeah, manual locking hubs, they're still in the front, which is just a throwback. That's the way it was in the 70s for all four-wheel drives. Um, yep, all that. So then let's, let's go back into some of these options when you configure it, which is what the question that the guy had. And so, I mean, there's paint. I mean, that's pretty obvious. And uh, powertrain. So you have the uh, Flex Fuel V8 6.2 liter, the 6.7 liter Power Stroke V8 diesel. That's the, the big diesel. The 7.3 liter, the natural aspirated two valve V8, that's what they call Godzilla. And uh, it's just, it's a straight natural aspirated, no turbos, nothing V8. So some guys like that because it's a big displacement with less moving parts. And so ideally the reliability is be better. 
Uh, Four-wheel drive was included in this one. We chose uh, electronic locking axle versus non-limited slip. So there's some choices there as far as your four-wheel drive. Um, I like electronic locking axle. It makes those um, wheels turn at the same speed. Limited slip is kind of computer controlled. Well, it'll, it'll check to make sure things are slippage and it'll tighten those up using the brake system. Um, electronics. So then packages. Look at packages. We have a couple different things you can do for the gross vehicle weight rating. This is going to be important for towing. And so you can improve that. Usually what they do is they add different springs. I'm um, looking for the number here. Yeah, it, yeah, they're just different packages. Usually it's different springs. Um, it's different. Add, add a couple leaf springs. They, they change the suspension just a little bit to handle that additional weight. Uh, you still can get the propane gas package, the four, FX4 off-road package. This will be the hill descent control. So if you're going down a hill, it works like cruise control. You can select a button. Now, usually it's a button on top. Toyota's got the buttons. Other places have buttons on the screens that you can select the speed you want to go down. And it'll, it'll keep you at that speed going down. So I, again, all you do is uh, steer. Uh, Off-road, specially tuned front and rear shock absorbers, transfer case and fuel tank skid plates. So some skid plates, and then you have the FX4 off-road decal. Uh, going along, heavy duty service front end, suspension adds another leaf spring, snow plow prep package, adds the connectors for the snow plow. The Tremor off-road package has been talked a lot about this this year, and uh, we've had the chance to drive this. And so you get the bigger, you have to go with the bigger engine, and you get 35 inch off-road tires, the rear electronic locking differential, the front limited slip, and so it'll, like I said, when there's slippage, it'll limit that slip. Basically what it says, <laughs> the way it says. Off-road running, bar, running boards, uh, power driver seat, unique front air dams, um, so that it improves the approach angle, you're not smacking that air dam. The air dam is there for uh, fuel economy. Water fording vent tubes, rock crawl mode, so trail control mode. Trail control mode is, is, is like hill descent control, but it's for the entire trail. And rock crawl mode is just another a setting. It's like another drive mode. And tremor off-road decals and the things like that. So, oh here, here's the ultimate tow camera system that I probably blew, I probably murdered it in the one thing. But um, no, there's a different, there's a better description on this, I thought. But anyways, you get the rear view camera, 360 degree camera, so it does like, it takes four cameras and patches them together so you can see your truck like a computer game. You can see all the way around it. Uh, trailer revi re reverse guidance, you can see he's, he's do turning the dial, and then the LED high-mounted stop ch lamp chisel and the rear chisel camera. So uh, more cameras and more options for backing up. There's a better explanation of that. Um, let's see, exterior, different wheels, fifth wheel, gooseneck, um, prep package. Uh, this is adaptive steering. I want to open this up because I did some research on this as well. So this is adaptive steering. So it changes the steering ratio in response to vehicle speeds. The idea here is, is that trucks have gotten so much bigger that if you're going to park them in like a small parking lot or like downtown, try to back them into some spot, the adaptive steering will actually steer the truck faster. So at lower speeds, you're gonna have less steering effort, fewer turns of steering wheel at lower speeds. At higher speeds, the steering ratio gradually increases, producing a steering feel that is firmer and more controlled. So the idea is you don't drive like a sports car on high speeds and it changes the, st the speeds of the steering based on how fast you're going. And it makes these trucks drive a lot better and, and allows them to park a lot better. So different alternators, options there as well, and bed mat, bed liners. Oh, here we go. I must see if this has, oh yeah. This is the blind spot, uh, blind spot information system with cross track alert and trailer tow. I don't think I talked about this. So blind spot information systems, usually there's cameras in the mirrors and there's sensors in the mirrors, they'll shoot out and they'll detect somebody in your blind spot, right? So somebody behind the cab you can't see. And usually the trucks, I think this truck does it as well, has a little image in the mirror and it'll indicate somebody's in there, they'll light up that image and it'll say, okay, somebody's in your blind spot. What they've started doing even more is they've allowed the additional blind spot to go back with a trailer tow. So if you set up your trailer inside your the driver information screen, you have it set up, when you do blind spot information system, you turn on the bliss, it'll do your trailer too. So that way you're not gonna like, the truck's fine, but somebody's in your trailer blind spot, right? So it alerts you for the whole truck, so you're ready to, ready to turn the whole, to change lanes without any worries. Cross traffic alert is, it, there's um, radar that goes out past the back bumper. And so imagine you're at Walmart trying to back out. It'll send radar up and down the line of cars behind you 
and it'll alert you if somebody's coming down your, your row so you don't back up and somebody smacks inside of you. And so this is really important when, you know, again, trucks have gotten a lot bigger, but now you're allowed these additional safety features that uh, make it easier to drive. Oh, and the system supports, the blind, trailer tow system is up 33 feet long, so it's gonna do a lot of trailers. That's what that means. And so when you back up, somebody's coming down the rain, load, or down the road, it'll alert you there, and the trailer, the blind spot information system, Bliss, will alert you if somebody's in your blind spot, including your trailer. Alternators, I'm at uh, box link, that's the box link system. It's got the little, um, it's the connectors inside the bed. You can have a customer place trailer camera that you can feed into your um, infotainment screen. So like you could put a, a trailer mounted camera inside of your inside of your enclosed trailer. You could put it in the back side. You can do just places wherever you want to. Um, engine block heaters, backup camera, alarm, a hitch kit, hood deflector, individual trailer temperature pressure gauges. And so you can add those. So you can add, add trailer pressure monitoring system for each of the trailer tires, which is really cool too. So that way when you pull up the screen, inside the, they call it the driver information screen between the dials of the um, speed and your RPMs. You can actually see the trailer temperatures as well. Pretty handy. Um, LED light, clearance lights. There's a live drive power takeoff provision. So you can add a PTO shaft um, hookup. So if you're gonna run something like commercial off this, you can do that too. Power moonroof, quad beam. Um, Oh, the rear, rear window power sliding with privacy glass, yep. remote start, reverse sensing system. I was interested with this, they said this was. Okay, so the reverse sensing system detects objects you can't see behind the vehicle and alerts you in a signal inside the cabin when you're slowly backing up. So uh, just additional sensing. And again, with these sensors, all that's gonna mean is you have to keep your truck a lot more clean. <laughs> that's what that's gonna mean. Um, looking at the these sensors don't work when they're dirty. Just kind of going through, I think I covered everything there. I don't think there's anything else that kind of stands out as a different. Um, interior, click on this for a second. Yeah, the 110, uh, 400 watt AC outlet, which is pretty cool. The all weather floor mats. We talked about adaptive cruise, collision warning with brake support. Uh, the entry, easy entry exit memory driver's seat. This is pretty cool. Some of the higher trim level trucks are doing this. And so when you open the door, it'll move the seat back and so you can get in and out of the cab, and then when you get in the truck, when you press the, the start button, it'll move the seat forward for where your driver memory button was set at. And so you can do this for the mirrors as well. I think they offer the mirror as well. And you do it for the, the, um, the driver's side mirrors, and you can, you can adjust those as well. So everything comes in for you, the driver, when you press the driver's seat memory button. And usually it's two or three different settings for that. So you can have a couple different people that drive your truck press that button and get in and out the cab. Yeah, power ventilated driver, passenger seat with driver's side memory. So if you always like to have your um, ventilated seats on, you can always, you can select that as a feature as well, um, or heated. There is a rapid heat supplemental cab heater, which is important for the diesel. Diesels take a little while to heat up. This, you can put an additional heater in there that heats it up in the winter time for you. Pretty handy. Oh, here it is, the ultimate tow, tro- Camera system with pro trailer backup assist. I knew there was a better way to say this, not for me to say it, but I knew there was a better screen on this. And so uh, so the images, so ultimate trailer tow camera system, they take four cameras on each side of the truck and they do a 360 degree, which you can see on the screen. And then the rear view camera, you can guideline center dash to help you hook, hitch to your truck up so that you can run, almost you can basically load your uh, uh, ball on your truck by yourself without having somebody to guide you because you have this center display. Um, trailer reverse guidance. This is a digitally expanded rear view view via cameras and side mirrors and visual guides. So you can tell, show the direction of the truck and the trailer and guidelines changing with a steering wheel movement. And so the, and then the pro trailer backup assist is when you rotate the dial. And what that dial is, instead of, you know, turning right for the trailer to go left or reversing that, it just does it for you. If you want to, if you want the trailer to go right, you just turn the dial, the trailer goes right. And so it's pretty handy with that. It makes backing up the trailer a lot easier. Um, Upfitters, the Bang & Olufsen uh, sound system, Sync 3 included, voice activated. So that's basically the features of the F-350 Platinum. And uh, I don't see anything else that really have to explain. It looks like that's about your price, $75,000, <laughs> which is rather expensive. But those are, the, those are the features I'm looking at. Those are the things that, that you know, I've seen as far as new things coming out. I've tried doing different stuff. There have been videos on these I've done. 
And so, hey, that's what I got for you. If you have any other questions, you know, again, let me know. Make sure you, again, hit subscribe. Let me know if you uh, uh, stick around. Have a good time. It's always a good time. Uh, it's Tim at PickupTruckTalk.com. Kind of rambling here in a minute. But uh, check out this other video here. It's a cool time. Uh, website down below. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you down the road.